Right ho, right ho, right ho. Yes, indeed. Great. Uh, if you could um, stuff your balls with one, uh, I guess, stuffable, um, pro- uh, you know, recipe, not recipe, ingredient, what would you stuff your balls with? I don't quite understand the question. <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest. Okay. If you could, if you could Stuff have your my balls. Yeah, in a sort of stack, like taxidermy esque way. Um, what? Yeah, if you could stuff your taxidermy. Balls oh no, I'm confused. So I've got to your balls. Turn my balls essentially into waxworks. Not waxworks. Are they no. still, will they still function? Yeah, no, you'll still be alive and everything. Uh, but just like your balls are stuffed. Polyfiller. Oh, interesting. Is that no? Maybe not. Maybe not polyfilm. Like the like expanding, expanding foam. Expanding yeah, foam. maybe expanding is a bad, <laughs> a bad thing to think of. I was, uh, I was just thinking rice. Do you remember the? I'm about to say, and this is of an urban legend, but there are so many. No, it actually happened. Stories about oh, the man ate loads of rice. And, and then he drank loads of water and expanded in his stomach. Oh, that is, and he, yeah, that does sound And right. he exploded. Yeah. Like, it's an urban legend, but that story always sticks in my For head. For some reason, I thought you were going to tell me, or mention the one about the rugby player who dislocated his hip, and when they re- uh, relocated it, his ball got trapped in the gap between his thigh and pelvis or whatever, and they had to, and it chopped his ball off. No, I wasn't going to say that. No, you weren't. But that's, that's, that's changed things. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I'm not the person I was seven seconds ago yeah, anymore. That, that, yeah, apparently that was. I always hear that. That was uh, like a sporting injury. <laughs> no, but I was like, if you put ball, uh, balls in your rice, if you put rice in your balls, I suppose then you're not going to. Well, they would already be. If you put dry rice in there, like, I suppose yeah, you're obviously. then not going to like suck water up your belly like a fucking elephant, are you? Yeah, no, not at all. I don't even. So try it should that. be fine. I don't even try that now. Baby. What? Hello, baby. Did you miss me? Hello, darling. Hello, Pen. That was, uh, do you know what that was? What? A very bad impression of. Was that Dirty Den? No, it was, <laughs> no, it, it was Kano from the 1994 Mortal Kombat movie. Oh, I thought you meant Hello, the Grind baby. Rapper. Did you miss like, me? No, not the Grind. Not. That is definitely the, not Kano. The Grind Rapper. Not the Grind Rapper, Joseph. Not the Grinder Rapper. My, my, my. Not the Grind Rapper. Um, oh, how yes. are you, right? Yes, hello. Hello. Welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, well, we episode 211. I didn't come episode. Did I even do the intro? No, not at all. I didn't do the intro no, at all, did I? No, you, uh, we you... immediately went into you doing a Kano <laughs> and then discussing it. Yeah. Okay, let's rewind. Okay. Welcome to episode 211 of All Seen Guys Podcast with Greg and Joe. I, of course, am Greg, and I'm joined as always, not over the Skype waves, but over the fucking kitchen table. Who are you? Obviously, Joe Jackson. Obviously, Joe Jackson. Uh, he's not bent over the kitchen table. He's sat in front of me in a seated position on a chair that I've uh, I've applied for him. We've, only, applied. we've, we've only, I've applied the chair for you. We've only just started, though. You know, there's so much could happen in the next hour and whatever. It's always a wonderful treat when uh, me and Joe are sat at the same table. Love it. I'm Absolutely. actually feeling pretty buzzed pretty quick actually. yeah no i've got a good buzz on for yeah, uh, um, for quarter to 12 in the uh in the yeah day. On, a, on a beautiful tuesday well a lovely tuesday. not raining tuesday it's just been raining a fucking lot mm. right it's been raining a lot disappointing summer i'm mm. gonna say it i'm gonna say it well the last week at least yeah well a yeah. couple of weeks but yeah been fucking... we had yeah we had some moments of good weather yeah We've, uh, we had a you know we had a couple of barbecues here and there here and yeah. there we have a couple of eds a couple of eds but yeah, fucking, and uh, now we're uh, got. We've done it again, haven't we? We've gone, we've gone straight to weather. Oh, you need to, you need to get out of the way. You get out of the way. Get out of the way. People True. expect it now. Yeah. You didn't mention the weather. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for us to receive that. I'm sure. Message. Our, our, our... Didn't, uh, didn't get my weather update from two weeks ago. Oh, uh, American <laughs> listeners love English weather updates. That's true. They love it. Yeah. It's what they it's, they can chime in. So yeah. So yeah, for you listeners, it's uh, at the moment it's it's blue skies but cloudy as well. Yeah. But Typical. we got the back door open. Standard, so standard English weather. You may hear a breeze with the back door open. It's quite lovely. It's quite lovely. Um, what's been going on, Joe? It's good. It's all right. Um, it's all right. Yeah, it's all going well. Working. 
Uh, yeah, how's the flat? New flat? How long have you been there now? What, three weeks? Uh, it is getting, it'll be a month next week. Oh. Ah. So, uh, so three, three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. No, Someone's keeping good. track. Yeah, we got our, we got a, a um, fun time is over. Now we've got to start paying bills. Uh, yeah, no. So it's uh, it's always an interesting uh, one. But no, it's all good. Um, we had we had the day off uh, together on Sunday. Uh, me and Becca, so we nice. uh, we went to Richmond Park. Oh, lovely! For the first time, uh, what, we, in your we've life? been in. No, 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 been no, no. Richmond we, Park before. Yeah, we, we filmed a music <laughs> video there. <laughs> I don't know I've been there with you. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we no, we just sort of we went before, but we didn't really go too far in. Um, yeah. But this time we had a we had a bit of a wander around for a good half hour. Um, nice. We were. It, like, fucking so many cyclists. Oh yeah. <laughs> and there's like a big hill. Um, or like there's a hillish sort of bit going down towards the entrance yeah. where, where we go in and um, we were sort of going along and they're all like you just hear them sort of like whizzing past going down and I turned to Becca and I was just like it's really annoying that none of them say we <laughs> you know like it's I just I feel like if cyclists are just wasting their time if they're not going down a hill and saying we I mean it'd be pretty exhausting to constantly be saying we no it wouldn't not, not as <laughs> fucking exhausting as cycling for 70 miles or whatever they do on a on a sunday the, the, i mean now it would change because it's the summer holidays but the most i my most annoying time for cyclists and this isn't me cyclist bashing i'm just saying yeah. in general is I, on sunday i always start work at 7 a.m i leave my house usually i'm usually there by half six yeah there's always I sit in the car sunday, reply to my emails and stuff always a fucking tour de surrey going on and like so yeah, but it's like i'm leaving at like quarter past six in the morning yeah and i go down Walden rush it's a little windy like sort of like country looking road right it's not like a single lane like it's it's a proper road yeah 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 but i go down there and it's got a few like turns in it and i always have to slow down because sometimes you get around the corner on a sunday morning and bam cyclist oh yeah or two of them yeah and they and you're like oh. again that's greg not bashing cyclists no i didn't bash any of them or non, non-verbally or with his car or recently and to be their credit at least they walk on the other side of the road so oncoming drivers can see them but i've seen people like walking down there yeah like some of them, one, I passed the couple the other morning, the woman literally had her heels in her hands. <laughs> and I'm like, man, they've been on a night out. They they've lost. been on a night out. They are lost. They have been on a night out. Fucking hell. Like, walking down this road. <laughs> like, oh. fucking, with cars whizzing past them. Actually, it was just me. But yeah, we'll be careful. Come on the corner. Cyclist. Fucking. You've got to really slow down, man. Yeah. It freaks me out every time. Now I creep up to it. Like, No, fair enough. <laughs> You, get, you you learn you learn quickly in that situation, mm. um, but yeah no. So we had a we had a walk around uh, we had a walk around Richmond Park. Yeah, and um, we we got stuck in the rain a little bit, and we were in like the big flat open area. Yes, um, so it was unfortunate. But we uh, yeah no, we got out and then we went into Kingston. Whilst we we're walking to Kingston, I'm I had a spliff in Richmond Park, obviously. Of course, so I was a little bit stoned. And then we're walking along and there's a guy in front of us, but he's holding hands with two women. Nice. Like, so either side. And I wanted to follow this guy for the rest of the fucking day. Because um, I was just like, what's the, what's the dynamic here? Like, maybe they... they're looking after him. Maybe. Maybe. But it was like, and it was like one woman was dressed in black and one woman was dressed in white. And I was like, is this like a two-face situation going on here? <laughs> like, um, it was, yeah. And it, he was engaged with both of them. Both women were not young enough to, for any of them to be his like daughter. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, and I was just like, oh, I'm fucking. F- Maybe it's his two mums. <laughs> Mate, they they weren't Sisters. old enough to be his mums. That's the thing. It was like there had to be it had to be a partner of some sort. And there's no way he's going to hold hands with his wife and his sister. <laughs> Like that's, that's fucking weird. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen, mate. Find me a find me a scenario where that happens, apart from maybe walking through a haunted house in it's dark. <laughs> that's a good scenario. Like that's the only time. That's the only time. Oh, uh, I agree. Yeah, that's the only time. I saw the other day. So the whole Bam Majera. Oh my fucking so those, god! I'm sure those for those who don't know, Bam Majera was like Jack for the mainstream. He was Jackass. We yeah, we've known was, him since like in, CK, no, we oh, like we've, since we've what, been following him since like CK like one early two thousand. When I was a kid, he was like the coolest guy in the world. Yeah, I wanted to be him. But, I'm um, not gonna lie, likewise, it was very yeah, very yeah. obvious. Uh, but um, yeah, he's obviously been losing his mind over the last few years, and um, he has ongoing beef with people that are on Jackass and what have you. So he's um, basically ever since Ryan Dunn fucking died in a car accident, he's just 
gone off yeah. the fucking rails. Um, and it's it's, but it's a lot of things. It's alcohol. It's now drug use. It's mental, like mental health stuff. It's yeah. like he's been to rehab several mm. times, but obviously just doesn't care because he doesn't yeah. want to go. He's obviously doing it for other people, and that's the classic thing that Steve <laughs> yeah. always said is like, if you if you if you're going to go to rehab, you have to want to go. Yeah. Otherwise, you're like not you're not going to take it serious. He um, says, "Was cracking up here." <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so obviously we know we know about uh, you know he's a bit troubled at the moment. And uh, I was watching a clip of Steve's podcast the other day. And, oh yeah, and, and they he's oh you got dissed in a that rap track with Bam. This with is Bam. so bizarre. And yeah. he was like, "Oh yeah, but it's no, it's all love. It's okay." He does say he still likes me. He's just poking fun, you know, blah blah blah. blah. But he's like, you know, it, it, for those Australian mumble rappers, you know, this is a big get for them that's a good thing yeah, for them yeah absolutely blah, blah, blah. he's like it doesn't make Bam come across that good but it's so, good for them so I was like he fucking re- teamed up and did a fucking yeah. like rap song so yeah. I looked it up found the video mm-hmm. watched it fuck man Jesus Christ yeah that was and I'm, I'm not one to be like slamming music for the sake of it nah fuck that was not my cup of tea nah um, nah, nah. But, I, it, but so, I was like is he actually gonna rap and oh, my god it's bad it's it's so it's, fucking bad he's not even trying no is that he's, the point? He's not even trying. He's just like I think. It, I'm like, this isn't a verse. So a lot has maybe been, it's not meant to be. A lot has been going on. He's What's the been, track called? This is Bam. I uh, am Bam. I'm um like Bam or something like. Be, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't care. Um, it's bad. It's what it it's is. It's got Bam just in the title. It's bad. I feel like Bam. That's it. I feel like Bam. So yeah, a lot's basically happened this year with him. Oh yeah. Um, so there was a video of him like uh, basically he's is he's separated from his wife. She won't let him see his son um because he is just fucking off. He's, yeah. He's yeah, 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 off yeah. his fucking rocker mate. Yeah. Um <clears throat> there at one point he uh has been threatening the cast of Jackass. He was supposed to be in the in the the one that released Jackass Forever. Yeah, yeah. He was supposed to be in that, but they he had to sign a uh, a contract to say that he was he had to stay sober. Yeah. Um, didn't. No. Got kicked off, and then was just like fuck all these people. Like started threatening the director Johnny Knoxville. All these people. Whilst that's going on, he's just perpetually drinking. Um, has also now remarried in this very short amount of time um, got just married to a random woman like a month ago or something I didn't know he got married again I missed that um, attacked his brother um, <laughs> one from CKY yeah yeah Jess wow. yeah uh, attacked his brother uh, threatened him and his family um, and now there's like a whole court he's in court and I think he's been told that he can't leave the state of Pennsylvania no sorry or uh, Pittsburgh or whatever it is where he, no Pennsylvania is the is the, the city or whatever He's, for legal reasons some of this story may be alleged <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> I mean I've been I've been following it on Reddit because fucking Reddit oh, perfect well in that shit. case there you go. some details in this story may be alleged <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah he's in a court uh yeah, basically, he's uh, he's been forced to, or been told that he has to go to rehab by a fucking judge yeah um so it's all it's all yeah, it's, still it's but yeah no I it's saw, all a play for it's all a play for you're back in play I did see these fucking people he's like hanging out with and it's just like oh god yeah. and they're all like dressing like they are 13 years yeah. old in 1998 again and like it's just and just seeing Bam there who's like now like 45 and just haggard and yeah. not to use the, yeah, own, the, the the film title yeah not to use it, but like, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's sad to see because I was just yeah. like, this guy was like fucking cool yeah. when I was like 21, and now it's not so cool. Is that what happens to all of us? No, some people realize, like, all right, well, this isn't fun anymore. The other night, I, um, it'd been a tough week, been very busy. I got home, oh, but I didn't get home. I was like, oh, I really fancy, I was, I was gonna go, I was, I was meant to go out, didn't because I finished work late. Yeah. Um, but I really fancied a beer. And I was like, oh, where can I go? It's close and just get a beer. And I was like, maybe I'll just go into Kingston. <laughs> and then I, and then I, I think, maybe I'll just go to the Cox. But then I was like, oh, I'll do that. And as the day went on, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I really going to do that? I'm not. Nah. Maybe in my 20s I would have done that. No, no, no. It's I'll not probably you... just be stood in the corner on my own. You would have just been, been like, being, am I going to do and, that? And then, then I had this premonition of like when we used to go there yeah. and there would always be the older guys stood at the side, usually yeah. on their own. Yeah. 
and I was like, I'd just be that. Yeah, that's I'd be, exactly it. I'd be that person. I wouldn't be the who looks check out the old guy. Yeah, no, I would. I would be fucking, the old guy. Who's this fucking dude just in the corner? <laughs> who's this old guy on his own looking at us? Yeah, I get that. I hey kids, around. you ever heard of dance in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get dance in the middle. Like, what? Is this a gender neutral middle? <laughs> There's one of those nothing, annoying guys. There's nothing more middle than neutral. One of those annoying old guys that can't let go of the past, trying to convince the staff that I'm important. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You have no idea. I've been upstairs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Back when it used to be a kitchen. I've smoked accommodation. I've, I've smoked marijuana on the roof of this pub. Have you? Again, for legal reasons, some of these stories may be alleged. <laughs> the fighting clocks is where I smoked. <laughs> Which, to be honest, there was one point in my life, I thought that's what it was called. The farting clocks. No, 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 the fighting clocks. Because <laughs> you remember when I was a kid, well, not a kid, but when I started noticing more, it had a, a logo that said the fighting clocks in a really weird font. And in the O in cocks, it had what looked like a, a, clock. Uh, like a clock. Yeah. Like, I remember that's that what it, that's sense. what it looked like when it was in the bill. Yeah. I, remember, I remember it being the bill. Once. Oh, like, okay. oh, that's Kingston. So I did think it was with the fighting clocks for a little while. Oh, fair. What a like, fucking idiot! Ah, it happens, doesn't it? Fighting clocks is obviously I, um, our, our old haunt in Kingston upon Thames. I saw uh, you know you remember Tricky? What Adams? Oh Tricky? yeah, yeah, of course. I saw, yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw him at, like uh, yesterday. Oh, nice. Um, saw him outside uh, work. I just stopped and like, had a little chat with him. Nice. I hadn't seen you in ages. I was like, nah, mate, I don't go down to Cox anymore. I was like, nah, me neither. No. <laughs> but it was like, it was, as he said, it's just like, it's just that it's that classic thing where it's just like your time's you're done there like, yeah and it is like he's uh he was just like yeah it's just i'm his is he said just like yeah it's just uh a lot of young people you know and i was like yeah no you know exactly what you mean we're yeah. now the we're now the from when we were there and I'm yeah. not, this is no way a diss to nick castles but we're now the nick castles yeah yeah scenario. yeah 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 uh, and i'm not saying that we are as cool as nick castles no either. we're not as cool as nick castles no <laughs> but it is yeah like it's just you know all right, let the others have fun. I don't remember being in Nick Castle or Harry Bone. I can love, mate, Harry Bone, Nick Castles. Harry Bone. I'd have for Harry Bone fought our love for so long. I know. He was... Uh, I... And all he had to do was ignore us and we just couldn't let it go. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, like... When I, so when I used to go down there, like, on my own, or if I... So I used to go down there after... Me and this, uh, I used to work with this girl called Laura at Jessup's. Yeah. And this is when I was in the small one down Fife Road where Natjax is. Yeah, yeah. Um, me and Laura would always work Mondays. And on Monday, we'd be like, let's go to the Cox for some some drinks after work. Uh, and we'd just sit there, chat with the bar staff, as you fucking did. And then she would leave. And I would just be like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick around, actually. I'm going to have a, I'm going to stay and have a few more. And uh, I'm feeling a vibe. Yeah, I'm feeling, I feel like some, this could go in a direction. <laughs> also, I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> um, but this is, that. I think that's the exact scenario as to how I met you. It was like, Laura, Laura left, I stuck around. And then uh, you and Lee turned up. And then obviously I had a bag of pork scratchings and one of them looked like a pig's head. You'd, I'd seen you loads before there, but we'd had a really Oh, yeah, spoken. yeah, yeah. We'd never, we'd never chatted. I'd literally definitely... served you. I swear I'd served you a pair of Dickies and that, Jax. Yeah, most likely, yeah. I always remember you sitting on the bench outside Jessup's because I was obviously smoking. running between stores. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'd always nod at you going past. Yeah. All right, mate. All right, mate. Because you were always sat there, and there was I was a, always walking past. Yeah, there was a few other, there was a few other Natterjack staff members that I would also sort of nod, or just be like, "All right, mate. How you yeah, doing? yeah. All right, all right, mate. Yeah, all right, busy mate. day for." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, for, it's weird uh, to think. Luke, it's weird to think at that point that they'd be like, "Oh, in twenty years, he'll be sat in your kitchen recording a podcast." I know. What's that about? Eight years. What's that fucking about? <laughs> talking right, about mental. talking about the decade you spent down a pub together. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, yeah. I remember uh, Luke. Uh, uh, fudge I used to oh, sit yeah, on, yeah, on a yeah, Saturday yeah. I'd be like alright mate I always remember like he was down the cocks one night yeah and I was like hey mate how you doing like, hey we were sat there chatting and then this guy this is it, like this weird guy in a suit sat down to us and started playing about like time as a construct and stuff oh like yeah yeah and it was just like are you God and he was just like I am I know this I, mean, <laughs> I don't know this guy yeah, but yeah, I remember yeah. this guy yeah and I had a picture of Luke with this guy <laughs> Um, and I sent it to him on Facebook um, uh, and then like got a friend's request and I was just like hey man how you doing look I, this is that picture from last night he was like oh cool check out my band <laughs> <laughs> and I was like oh. what are they called again I can't remember what they're called I had a t-shirt of them at one point no I know they, they were good I enjoyed the band yeah. Um, but yeah crazy times we played all those gigs down there I actually fell down a bit of a rabbit hole recently where um, we were watching um, YouTube me in Indiana and on the suggest on the music bit, 
uh, the video for Why You Stressing came up. Oh, and yeah, Indiana yeah. saw the thumbnail and was like, "I want the the song. I want the I want Daddy everyone, and Joe's song." Everyone likes Why You Stressing. <laughs> I want Daddy and Joe's song, so I put it on. Pardon me. Excuse me. Oh, another one. And uh, we watched it, <laughs> played it. Oh, a bit more. Watched video. And I was like, oh man, that was. I remember that day. We were so hungover. We'd gone out the night before down the Cox. Yeah. We were really fucking. I felt bad. I remember we both felt fucking we bad. Had to, we had to really convince Ed to come with us as we, well. Well, Ed didn't like, at first because no. we, we met in Kingston in the morning somehow, went to Tesco's, bought so much booze. I yeah. remember my bag rattling. And we didn't buy any fucking water. No. <laughs> no fucking water. And it was like the hottest fucking day. And we were it hung was, over yeah. in fucking Richmond Park, Bushy Park, wherever we were. We had to message Ed, and this is a testament to Ed yeah. as a friend, and be like, you need to come to Richmond Park. Please. Because we need you to hold the camera for us while we film a video. And can you bring a shitload of water? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he did. He did. He nah, did. He absolutely did. He did. He absolutely did. He did. Hanging out his ass, he came. Oh god, yeah. He was in Kingston with Sarah. I remember, and he was like, "Look, I've got. I'm in John Lewis having a bad time. I, I will be there though." And I was like, "Legend." And yeah, yeah, and then he bought, yeah, he bought two big bottles of water. Yeah. And uh, yeah, filmed it for us. And then yeah, and then we watched that Min and Jenna, and then when that <laughs> finished, so fucking stuck. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then when that finished. I then put on the video for Burn the Lords because obviously it's kind of like a... Mm. The video is almost like a weird sequel to Why He's Dressing because we go back to the places in Richmond that. Park. I remember that, yeah, because we were going there and it was like a really cloudy day and I was like, how about we film in and the And it was exact... winter, so the places... Yeah. Were, not winter, but it was on its way. All like the foliage from everything the trees and everything is all gone. bare. The bent... Oh, mate, the fucking um, log you're sitting on and while you're stressing looks so like Disney-like and happy. Yeah, yeah. And when it cuts to... Because I show that and then I do a comparison to it now for Burn the Lords. Yeah. And it's all fucking decrepit and, oh, it looks so good. So where I am as well. Where you're you're like, like, where you're like sitting down with like You had like a bush behind Mm. you or something and it was like, again, when we filmed... I had the roots for them upturned tree behind me. Oh, mate, it looks so good. Yeah, it looked great. It looked really cool. It was really good. And then Lizzie took in Jenna up... Lizzie, yeah, Lizzie took in Jenna upstairs and I just kind of kept going. Mm. And ended up watching, I watched a video on YouTube of us doing, why are you stressing, Go then going into, um, don't want to see the sunrise live at the Cox. Oh, damn. That would have, was that maybe Jody's birthday? No, it was a gig where, and funny enough, I swear you were wearing your red and black checkered shirt. I sent you a picture of the other day. When oh, I saw yeah, it yeah. H&M. That, was, that was definitely that, that's how gl- that, That's the testament to the friendship. I see a shirt that Joe owns in a shop. I take a picture of it and send it to him. <laughs> <laughs> your shirt? And I was like, well, yes, I guess. I mean, yes. you've had it a while. It's, I'd say, I'd say, yeah, but I got it from H&M. Yeah, yeah I know, but it, it just shows it's obviously still going. Well, that was a, that's a staple. It oh, was, was yeah. a staple in the Joe attire, mate. I still um, I still wear it every now and again. Yeah, it's good. Bust it out. Um, I forgot the point of the story. Now, fuck. You were, you were watching the uh, the videos. Of oh the yeah, guys yeah, yeah, yeah. You're wearing that shirt in it, and I remember that gig because that was. I remember a couple of people from work came down. I think Rachel, Raji, maybe Beth and Ruby. I'm not sure. Came down, Roll. but it wasn't very busy. It was quite. A, it was it, probably one of the quieter gigs we did. Mm. I can't remember who we were playing with. Um. I don't remember any other band that night. I'm sure there was, but uh, it wasn't that busy. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't the biggest crowd we'd played to. But annoyingly, it was the first one Jamie had come to watch. Oh God! Yeah. So I and, and stay for the whole show. Yeah. So honestly, it literally felt like we were just playing for Jamie. Yeah, yeah. It's that classic. Like... Actually, it must have been Earth Tide because I remember Randy and I remember Chris being there. Well, that well, he might have come anyway. Anyway, Jamie, we felt like we were playing for for uh, for Jamie. Yeah. But then afterwards, we were in the smoking area chatting to Chris. Yeah. And then Jamie came out and literally was like, that was amazing. Yeah. He's like, little light on numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was amazing. And he's like, you're making me, you've made me rethink a few things. I'm, that, yeah, I, no, I'm, that I'm was, I do touch. remember that. I yeah. do remember that, yeah. Jamie was, was the only other cox, by the way. Yeah. In case you're like, who's Jay? Who is this Jamie character? Because it was like, I always remember if I ever saw him down here, he was just like, so, uh, hip hop, eh? What's that about? Like, what's that about? Like, it just like, and it was like, they gave us a chance. Yeah. I mean, the first fucking gig shouldn't have, like, was mental. That was insane. That was, that was, my, and we've, that was we, insane. Again, we have, we have discussed these moments before, but it's always fun to re- revisit. revisit. Yeah. That first fucking gig with uh, Bluey's Leaving Do, where he chose all the bands to play. Yeah. And it was like Silent Front were playing. Yep. 
the spandex love were playing yep and uh, he'd he'd asked us, and by this point we were just recording music. He was aware of it, and we yep. had you know we had a mixtape's worth of fucking songs to do. Yeah. Um, and he was just like, "Do you want to do it live?" And we were like, "We, because we never really that no. never really crossed our mind." The plan was we were going to do four tracks, and that was it. Mm-hmm. We were going to do four tracks. And that was it. And then just for a bit of fun and leave it alone. Yeah. And then four became ten. Four became like ten and then an entire <laughs> weird concept album. We weren't even called Dice Rollers. We weren't. We no. were just we were Lafurian just called, and we Joseph were, Styling. There we were was, just called, no, The Living Room Presents. Yeah. We, there was, we weren't called Dice Rollers. Um, and yeah, we put that out. And the, yeah, then we played... We played The Cox. And then we played The Cox. And it um, was because it was Bluey's last night and because also, again, Spandex Love and the people in Spandex Love are able to draw numbers. Yeah. So, like, loads of, like, old faces came out Oh, as well. man, yeah. Um, but also, at the time, I was working at H&M, so all the fucking staff that I worked with came down, which... Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was busy night, man. Yeah, it was busy, busy. And we... Uh, Everything we... to lose. <laughs> huh? Everything to lose. Oh, my God. We, were, we saw the amount of people... <laughs> Like when we and we were just like I was not expecting this. No, and it was. It, but you had to just sort of like like as soon as soon as I said like the first words, I was like, okay, I yeah. I can't see a single face right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was great. Oh Fuck man, it. every gig we did, every gig, every time a song was coming up or the intro kicked in, every time I'd be like, I don't remember the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. Every time, I've forgotten the lyrics. Yeah. I've forgotten the lyrics, and I'd be doing the verse. I'll be saying the words, yeah. but still in my head, I've forgotten the lyrics. Why I'm saying them? I felt we I th- only for the first few tracks, and then you know, once I hit, I'd always have benchmark moments throughout. Uh, uh, so when we and that's usually like your more favourite songs because I'm sure yeah. you and I have like various like songs that are favourites to perform or that we did. Yeah, so we would start with um, usually maybe an intro, then go straight into a track, yep. straight into another track. Yep. Then we would be like, hello, we're yeah, those yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Nice to see you all. Uh, Put a 30 d- second gap in there. Do our, do our little comedy routine, then go into another track. Yep. That would usually be something like, um, um, it's my yeah. turn. Or which then my, or something. something yeah. And then go into like, and usually it'd be uh, while you're stressing, I'd give a bit of a, would be like, wherever, while you're stressing was usually kind of usually be my benchmark moment of, right, we're halfway through or over yeah. halfway through but that's the point where by that point I was kind of I, I settled into the moment and by that point I was like oh now I'm in that stage where I don't really want it to end yeah 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 but I kind of do to know I've done it right yeah but I also don't want it to end now at the same time it's like oh man this is the last song already and it goes so fucking like we I mean again we were always just like yeah just give us half an hour we'll fucking we'll smash Mate, it we'll do what we can that fucking gig when it was fucking hot as fuck I was in my Chicago Bulls vest oh I don't God. even think it was was it our gig? No, it was our gig. I think we were supporting Red and the Black. Yeah. And then at the end, we got up to do... Uh, um, oh, we did Fight, Fight for, for Your Right. right. And no, one, by knew, Beastie no Boys. one knew we were doing it. We it? got up to do Fight for Your Right by Beastie Boys. And it fucking went insane. Yeah. It went fucking mental. I remember like I Steve remember, and fuck. Steve and Randy got on stage because yeah. everyone at that point was off. We all just, yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. got off We the weren't stage. on the stage at all for that. Red really. and the Black instigated it as well. Yeah. They were just like, I, I know Chris and, um, Chris and, fuck, fuck Dan. Um, yeah. Got on the, they got their mics down into the crowd. No, not, I'm talking about the one when we ended up on the bar. Oh, Yeah. That, so oh, that yeah, was no, the that first was. time, but then we did that one a little while later, and I remember it was fucking crazy hot in there. It was really, it wasn't like crazy packed, but it was busy. Mm. But then it filled up towards the end. Then we did that. We dropped the Beastie Boys cover. We got up on stage with them, left the stage straight away. Yeah. We're in the. Bear in mind, our mics have leads. We were all the way at the back of the room. Yeah. Got on the bar in the corner of the venue. I remember I was had my hands over like the beams on the roof. I just, I just saw it. I, just, I remember us doing it. And it was just like. I just saw the opportunity. I was just like, you know what, fuck this. I yeah. Got like a, I got a fucking straight line for that bar right now, and we yeah, just getting up there. It was fun, man. It was. I, yeah, mean, it was I just remember sick. being being on the bar, bent over, like shouting into that microphone, and yeah. then just being so many hands and arms and people around me, just in case like, you fell. And fucking no, and just like you'd see the bar lady next to us, the hand come over in front of me, pouring red stag or <laughs> yeah. just pouring fucking <laughs> drinks into people's mouths. Like it just all fucking just went off. On. 
And then fucking. I was it, surprised we weren't told to get down at all. The fucking the yeah, but you're right. Points they all moved into the band started apart from the drums, obviously. So like walking into the crowd. Yeah. Oh mate, it was so insane. It was good. It was so it was insane. Really, really good. I always liked as well. I was I was always disappointed there was no footage of us playing in uh, the Stone in London. Uh, in uh, in Staines, sorry, the London. I think Stone. about that gig quite. Oh, but to go back to that night, I swear it was Becca was there. I swear Becca was there. And I okay. swear, this, and, I, and she was taking loads of photos of us on the bar. Yeah. No, I, no, no. It was someone else. Who was it? It was a. It was a. It, it was a girl who drank down there. Why do I think it's Becca? It wasn't. Maybe I always filled no. her in my mind. <laughs> no, it, I was like Becca has cameras. This is true. Um, no, it was. It was a girl who was. She'd taken. Bad... Apologies, Becca, if it wasn't you. Know, I've misremembered you, but it was a long time ago. I was, <laughs> it was a drunken night. It was. Um, she used to come down and just take photos of the bands playing. Right. Um, she looked a lot like Chris Rodriguez's. Uh, wife from uh, fucking Chris who did so not like Becca <laughs> no uh, Lor- is it Lorna Chris's oh wife? right yeah I don't remember she that she looked little... like her but it was um, she yeah no she came I'm having an internal sunshine on the spotless mind moment <laughs> oh I wish I could get that reference it's <laughs> <laughs> a good film oh, okay um, um, yeah no she uh, yeah she was always down taking just pictures of bands I don't know if it was for like a portfolio or something but she was alright always... well I remember her take, I remember photos being taken and mm. I kind of like waiting for them to be uploaded just about this to be sick oh on the God, dice roll this page so fucking long and then I saw her a little while later and I said to her oh hi uh, I never did you those, I remember you taking photos this when we did the gig it did um, the Beastie Boys track and she was like, yeah, I lost my camera that night. Oh, yeah. She's like, oh, I did. I took loads of photos. And she's yeah. like, I was really excited about them. She's like, I, I, my camera, got, I lost it. I put it down. It got picked up. It, it oh, disappeared that night. fucking brutal. And I was like, fuck. I mean, I'm sorry for your camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry your camera got stolen. I'm so sorry your camera was stolen. No, man. Any idea? Maybe I, well, what kind of camera was it? Maybe I can find it on eBay and get the memory card. <laughs> so I, I always liked the, yeah, the London Stone gig. Um, which is in Staines, right? Which is in Staines, yeah. And it was like... It scary was... fucking gig, man. Do you know how scared we were when we got there? <laughs> we were just like... We walked into that pub. We and walked it, in and it, it was like, like the football was on. They had it looked on. very chavvy. Lad. It looked well laddy. Very laddy. And I'm like, they're not going to fucking like what we're doing. Nah. Jesus Christ. Nah, nah, I was nah. so fucking nervous, man. It's just like, are we going to get... I, was, I wasn't too bad it's, getting there, but when I walked in and saw the place, I got fucking nervous so quick. The thing about the pub is, is it's not like the Cox, where the Cox is as, as a venue sort of away from the main bar area. Yeah. This it's is in the pub. This it's a good, is in, good it's fucking... Great, lo- oh, mate, it's a good great, stage. Yeah, yeah. Really, it's a really good, good whole... Yeah, it's a big area for the live shows. It's not yeah. like just a, like when you're in like, you know, a Green King pub and there's a tiny bit in the corner or an no, no, O'Neill's no, no, and someone like plays. This was a big... It was a really... It was a proper venue to play it was just open plan with the pub yeah but it was uh, yeah so there's no separation between whatever bands are playing that night and the bar area no. so if you're there you are there and you're going to hear music and you're going to have to fucking deal with it yeah but we were also like the night was put on by the red and the black so they chose all the bands playing and we're just like come come play this but also we want to do we also want to do another Beastie Boys track with you which was Sabotage which I fucking loved yeah, I, was like, was so I was so on board with fucking Sabotage so good um, but yeah, like so we we get there and as as I said, yeah, it's all lads playing pool and shit and like that does proceed on for the rest of the evening. Whilst yeah, but it was like us. What is uh, there was and it got busier as the football carried on. Yeah, yeah, the football carried on for a bit and then it kind of sort of like you sort of saw more people there for the music as the night sort of got mm-hmm. on before like band started. Um, but there was another. Ba- I want to say the Grudge, but I don't think it was the Grudge. But there was another band playing. There was that Doom band, right? Yeah. yeah. So they arrived. They were called like Sludge something. Sludge, no, yeah, Sludge. That. That, but yeah. Th- they showed up and they started sound checking. And we were going on after them, I think. Yeah. We were going on Which after them. Which we didn't them. understand. No, so they were opening. I think because they were. I can kind of understand. I kind of remember the, the vocalist or someone from that band telling us that they were going away or just got back from somewhere and they would they basically just wanted to get out of the way so they were going first it was, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. we were prioritised over them yeah no I mean I, I, remember- would, I, I think it would be like it, it, in that sense though it does make sense for one of the considering we were the only like rap 
yeah. act that night and everything else was rock and doom and fucking anything Mate. but like it I, like it would have it would have not made sense for us to go on first because if you see us go on first and you're just like oh shit what night and then the, yeah, the tempo changes you put a fucking rock band on first and they're just like alright sweet and then we come on they're like what oh, like, like, doom band they were quite grungy and doomy weren't yeah they? it was great but um yeah, and also, I remember the sound guy's face when I handed him an old iPod. <laughs> not even a new one. I say a new one. This it's is like still like 10 years ago, or maybe not 10 years ago. It was a, well, maybe. It was a fucking years ago. I handed him this fucking iPod, and he was like, what's this? And I was like, that's the music. And he was like, oh. And I was like, the track's the only thing on it. All you would do is press play. And he was like, okay. Yeah, cool. Let's do it. Yeah. Like, like, okay. But that's like every sound person we've ever done it with. Just yeah, like, no, but we always did it down the cocks, but this was out the cocks. And this yeah. guy, you'll honestly tell this had a, this isn't a normal thing when he has gigs. And he was very no. so much like, huh, okay. Where's your DJ? And you, then we sound you checked. You turned up with nothing. And we sound checked. And I remember him being a bit like, not being horrible. I could just see his face. It was a bit like, oh, okay, what, yeah. what's this? And like that, just seeing his kind of reaction on a sound check freaked me out a bit. But then we did the gig. Mm. And afterwards, he came to give me the iPod. And he was like, that was fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, that was great. He's yeah. like, man, he's like, do not stop. Keep fucking doing it. And I was like, oh, cheers, man. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the gig itself, yeah. Doesn't have to fucking tell you that. But like. yeah. But so the, we started, we played, they played their gig. We got up. It was, it, was, it went well. Mm. We had a few people on the, I say the dance floor, the, the, the venue we had floor. A good, we had a good crowd. Um, went well. People were shouting out summertime. In the, in the, yeah, in summertime, they yeah, were shouting it back good. at us. Like, uh, we had so a good time. The funny thing is, right, I right before we were going on, I was outside having a pre-gig cigarette. Just because, you know, no, that, yeah, didn't, yeah. that didn't fuck my voice up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was outside having a cigarette. And I got a, uh, a, suddenly a friend of mine called Sam uh, came along. Haven't seen Sam in fucking ages, but we used to go to the Reading Festival together. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. The same sort of drinking circle of friends and stuff like that. Really, really great guy. Um, and he just came fucking walking along drunk with his mates and he's like Joe and I was just like having a catch up so I was like what the fuck are you doing here and I was like I'm about to go on stage I feel like I was outside having a cigarette also was I there I don't know I I think I was I I remember seeing that I swear you saw the I remember seeing that into I remember the guy being like Joe and me being like oh god we're going on stage in a minute yeah 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 who's this guy but yeah I I don't think I I was stood nearby yeah I just remember telling him I was like well I'm about to be on stage in five minutes and he's like you what and then like told him what we were doing and he basically just went guys we're going in here and just fucking came in and watched it with his mates and he was like afterwards he was like that was fucking awesome. Like having just, I think just having that, I, my favorite part of that gig was during, it was either summertime or why you stressing and looking over to the right of the bar where everyone was, who was drinking and yeah, playing yeah. pool and stuff was, and the people playing pool. Was, there was a guy in a biggie t-shirt. I remember there playing was pool. that. Yeah. Yeah. But they, they, everyone playing pool was, uh, had stopped playing pool and were looking. And I was yeah. like, I'll fucking take that. Like if I can, someone who isn't there to watch it has stopped to actually check this out. I'm there for it. So when it finished, Red and the Black were headlining. I remember Chris came up to us. I think, uh, they both, in fact, the whole band came up to us and was just like, you had everyone up dancing. Yeah. They were like, everyone got up and was That's dancing. That's fucking sick. Like, and then they played their gig. and But then what changed was that by this point, you're hitting 11 o'clock. Uh-huh. And all the pubs in the area were closing. Yes. And this pub stayed open because it had a license to be a venue. So all the, like so, so now it's no longer yeah. just your pub. The lights are down all over the pub. Mm-hmm. It's now a venue. Yeah. You now have to pay three pounds to get in. Mm-hmm. So everyone who's been kicked out the surrounding pubs know this pub stays open later and it only costs them three quid to get in. Yeah. So they all come down <laughs> and all of the sudden... The thing is, there's a weather spoon's literally like two yeah, minutes yeah. down the road. And all of a sudden, during Red and the Black as their, their gig, it just packs out yeah. massively with loads of drunk... And I don't... Not all cunts, but there are some... There was there's some a cunts. lot of people there who are just there to be, you know, cunts. I want to keep drinking. It's annoying me. This is happening. Yeah. And there's a lot of people, oh, yeah, fucking gig, yeah, yeah. But um, because they were more metal, when people walked in, they were a bit like, ugh, like, mm-hmm. being a bit dicky. But again, the crowd that was there already loving it, it was busy. At that point, I was like, shit, man, we're going to get up now. Now look at it in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting back on stage in a minute. Fuck, look at this. Then they invited us back up. And we did two songs, right? We did I swear we I did think two. We did, I think Fight for I think Your Right, Fight for and, your sabotage. right and Sabotage. Yeah. And I remember during Sabotage, just being in the fuck. I couldn't see you. No idea where you were. <laughs> I was like in the fucking crowd. Well, because we split the verses. So yeah. you, me and Dan all did a verse each. Yeah. 
<laughs> and um, so we were all kind of. I think we tried to be. I think we maybe us three had moved down on off the stage again, just to kind of sort of spread it out a bit. Because, but I remember definitely being in like Dan in the middle of us. Dan and in the were, middle. Dan in the middle. But like obviously, because like yeah, you were the other side. I don't. Yeah. I don't have a recollection of what you were doing, but I could hear you. Like keep talking. I'm grabbing a beer. All right. Well, yes. Yeah, so we. Um, that was and yeah. No one expected us. I'd I'd done a practice or. I think I went to one of their practices in Ashford at the uh, airplay uh, place. That yeah, we I couldn't make the practice, times. so that was the first time I was doing it. Yeah, which was, and I was just like, "You good with this?" Like it was like the like I did your verses there, so I know what to. I I've got it covered. If you're not sure, um, but yeah, we fucking still persevered and fucking. It was awesome. It was so good. I'm I'm so. But I remember I remember no being footage. I remember being in the crowd, and it being. And this guy, I remember looking at this guy, he was like a shaved head dude, white t-shirt, he looked absolutely fucked. Mm. He looked like a fucking nutter. And I remember he looked round, he'd been, I I clocked him by the bar Mm. most of the evening when it it became like all the kicking out time for other pubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was the only one that's been a bit dicky, but but I remember seeing him running in and just fucking, like, fucking really going for it. Loving it. it. But while he was doing it, mate, he fucking threw that's half his pint over me I, kn- <laughs> I know he wasn't doing it on purpose I could see he wasn't I could see he was just fucking off his tips and just <laughs> dancing but no- and then I fucking slipped in his beer someone oh. about six people caught me by the t-shirt and I kept going yeah. and then they just stood me back up that's fucking like, good I remember just slipping and they, they all caught me and stood me back up mate. and I kept going and then I didn't lose my verse that's but, awesome yeah a good fucking gig man that was, yeah, it was dude, fantastic that was good and it was, uh, yeah, as I said, like, I, I just wish there was, I think someone said that they did have like a copy of us doing it, like a video of us doing it. But the gig was so fucking loud that they, they, the, the, there's the only, the, the only one of shit. us is there's a video of us doing um, Fight for Your Right the first time at the Cox is yeah. on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not great footage, but it's not great no, sound. And all, oh, they're saying it's 10 years old. <laughs> yeah, or plus, so, I, remember. I remember being so drunk for that. Well, that's on there. And the Rage Against Machine with Earth Tide ones on there. Love that. And uh, yeah, there's quite a few on there. There's some I, I forget. I about. remember. I, I remember the. I think we were doing the Rage uh, the Rage covers with um, Earth Tide for yeah. the first time. And again, I um, never came to practice for that. Oh no, I came to one. I did come to one actually. Yeah, because it think was. We only did one. <laughs> it was. Um, oh god, yeah. I. Um, uh, yeah, no, it, it all came up. We did like a medley, didn't it? Yeah. It was like, it was like three songs, but all kind of yeah. sort of chopped down. It was like an eight minute track. Yeah, it was great. Um, but I obviously, we were playing our gig first and then obviously jumping on at the end with Earth Tide. Um, and this was the first time, this was the first time I met Brendan O'Prey. Oh yeah, from um, Frontman of the Lagoon. Yeah. Out the Lagoon. This is the first time, I knew I knew of him and stuff Everyone like that. Everyone knew of him. Yeah, but I'd never, I'd never had like a conversation with him or anything no, at yeah. all. But I, I remember us, doing the gig and coming off stage and someone just grabbed me by the shoulder and was just like patting and it was just like it was Brendan just be like that was fucking awesome um, had, a, had a brief conversation and he was just like you guys are fucking cool uh, that was really cool hadn't seen anything like that down here in a while Yeah. Um, and I was just like do you enjoy Rage Against the Machine and I was just like yeah and I was like watch Earth Tide uh, and not because they're Rage Against the Machine no like no that, no but just we're like just we've got something coming at the end of the at the end of the show yeah, yeah. and he stuck around and said it was sick and uh, yeah, he's always always a good conversation to have with uh, with Brendan. Oh, he he grabbed you after we played, right? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. He grabbed you after no, 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 we no. left of Earth Tide. No, no, no. After yeah, he oh, just, sick. Um, That's cool. Yeah, no, just said he he very much enjoyed. I, That's cool. Man, it's so it was so odd always to have people like come up and be like, I really enjoyed that. And we, we were, cause Especially we were people we didn't like, know. Yeah, just like. Really? When it was people we didn't know, that that was better. That was always a good one. One of the what, it'd always be the cigarette after the gig. Would go out into the alley for the cigarette after the gig. Yeah, and people would just be like, "Oh, yeah, come up yeah, to yeah, you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. That was amazing. I remember oh, the, geez, um, the guys in Q tones were always really. Yeah, they were. Nice. I remember uh, Jess coming up to us after a gig, but like it was a uh, Jess saying, and Rob, yeah, saying it was a privilege to have shared the stage of us and I, yeah, know, I think I think I just went yeah cheers that's just like what, but I was always a, a bit starstruck with Q-Tones because Rob from Q-Tones hands down is literally one of the greatest guitarists oh I've my seen. god yeah it's it's like it's ridiculous phenomenal yeah like such an amazing guitarist ridiculous. and it would always be insane um, yeah it was I I think the weirdest interaction I had with someone after a gig was so when uh, 
it was when they did the spandex love did like the the reunion shows if you will <laughs> yeah and um we were we were playing and then after what i didn't realize was i was gonna go and have a cigarette so i put a cigarette behind my ear got distracted by talking to someone and we're just like joe we're on and i was like fuck played the gig with a cigarette behind my ear and then this guy just came up to me as mean as as soon as i stepped off the stage and was just like that was awesome but don't ever fucking play a gig again with a cigarette behind your ear and i was just like what's the problem what is the problem what is the problem it was just like why? I remember. It's funny you say that. After why are you so fucking I, I, angry? I remember obviously over ten years and ten years ago now when we got our wedding photos. My dad looking through the book and there's a picture of you close up with a cigarette behind your ear. Yeah. And my dad went, "This fella had a cigarette but I, behind his ear the whole time." <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there? No, don't you like turn to another page? There's another picture of me, and I've got a cigarette man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. There he is. Yeah, there he is. Got another one. There he's he goes. Got, he's gonna smoke it now. <laughs> Always got to have a got to have a backup. Trademark thing. Jackson. Yeah. Joseph trademark Jackson. Oh, well, yeah. Man. Sorry, guys. We we reminisced for. A, quite a while reminisce <laughs> reminisce about stories you've probably all heard a hundred times yeah um, but there you go that's oh, what that's... happens when it's your podcast um, before we go into gear shopping did we, did we mention we met up with Luke we haven't no so Luke we, the, in uh, fact we've, we've forgot to mention anything any, about any, it yeah. any reference of so, this so um, yeah Luke who uh, we refer to as the um, top shagger the top shagger which is our interpretation of a shepherd who gets things overheard <laughs> slash geese jobs <laughs> It's a, it's a it's an integral bit of a story. I never I never associate geese dropping with sheep, but with yeah, uh, no, but it's the way it's gone. Yeah. So um, a shepherd, enough, a shepherd of geese. Before drop. we get there, I've always set this up for um, who someone replied to um, an Instagram story of an episode recently, and basically was like, "Oh, I really enjoy the show. Why is it called geese dropping? Nice. No, like why is it called geese dropping? Because it's not just guys. That's a good point. And I was like. Yeah, I, I've always thought that. Oh, was so, this like a? Was this? Why didn't you make a gender neutral version? No, of no, 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 no. They weren't. They weren't complaining. They were just wanting to know. They obviously haven't. Because women send geese drops as well. Go back to the first episode and we will explain it. No, um, so ge- no, they weren't a bit horrible. They were generally they were being quite funny. They were just abs- curious. They were an absolute where we delight. They just put absolute delight. Um, so our segment geese dropping. We've discussed this before. Is basically eavesdropping, but I don't want to yeah. call it eavesdropping. No, it wasn't as fun. Um, but and overheard in London was taken. So basically, me and Joe were up London one day, and we could we we're walking through. We were, went up London to talk about plans to make a podcast. Yeah. But what we were going to do was business trip to London, a little business trip um, yeah. to discuss what we were going to do with the podcast, what our ideas, what ideas were. And as we're walking around, it's London's busy. You do hear snippets of people's conversations. You you know whether you want to or not, you do hear people saying things. It's a busy city, and it was. We just started jotting them down. Yeah. Um, just started jotting them down bits you heard I thought like, we should read out think overheard snippets of conversations we've heard yeah like sounds like I'm saying the <laughs> intro right <laughs> I was gonna say we should write them down so yeah we started writing them down and it is eavesdropping because it was us walking around doing it mm-hmm. before we really opened it up to listeners yeah. it was geese dropping because it was, it was yeah. me and you Cut going around it was, me, it was me and you going around just taking note of things we overheard. Well, we always, yeah, that's how it always started, wasn't it? it? Was it was always the ones that we had heard? It was like, oh, what have you heard this week? Rick? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then people just, I mean, we probably opened it up to you know the listeners, but people just started sending them. Yeah, to yeah, us. we did. Yeah, and then we started getting them in, and it's now it's become more. Some episodes we have no geese jobs. It's, it's no. people sending them to us, but we just call them geese jobs. I think it's one of our jobs. one of our proudest creations. Yeah, it's there now. Just yeah, we this just is our this is. Just reading out snippets of your conversations we've overheard. But yeah, so Luke... Um, Luke's, Luke's got a Luke, fucking ear for Luke, it. Luke, Luke started listening to the podcast recently and has been on top form of selling us in geese oh, drops. He's so been, many. He's, he's a good year and year and a, a Yeah, I mean, we, we obviously have Sam Eastwood, who was our northern, roaming, northern, northern uh, geese roaming. Mainly yep. on trams, he gets the job done. Uh, and then gets the, job gets the job done up north. He's covering up there. Feels and like then, you know, like the uh, I'm 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 hearing it like, but like the like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle song. So it's just like Ray feels cool but cruel. <laughs> Michelangelo is a party dude. This is just like Sam's a northern <laughs> geez. <laughs> Sam's a northern on geez. the trams. Gets the job done. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja, ninja, ninja Geese Drop Teenage Mutant <laughs> Ninja Geese Drop God I wonder what a Geese Drop would look like That's Geese weird. Drop in the half shell Geese, geese drop, drop Power, power. Um, Jesus uh, So yeah 
So then Luke started listening and sending us loads of geese drops. Huge and we jokingly in one episode referred to him as a shepherd of geese drops. And I was like, what would a geese drop shepherd be called? And now he's this the top is shagger. The longest explanation for a nickname. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we met Luke. Yes, we had a. We, we managed, met up with him uh, the other day. We've met him before in the pub here and there. But yeah, we met up with him for a couple of beers in uh, in uh, Serbia. And it was a very Jim nice Ray. afternoon. It was lovely. No, thank Good you. Afternoon. Uh, thank you for your time. I had presence, Indiana Luke. with us. And uh, yeah, she. Uh, yeah, she was very impressed by his beard. So yeah, good job. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I hope, uh, I hope the job and everything's going well, Luke, as well. Um, yeah, six seeing you. Uh, we're actually after key shopping. We're the gonna... reason the reason we're bringing up Luke yes. is is because yeah, we're actually going to do in a uh, playing. We have done a while since we've ended an episode of a band, but uh, very long time. Very long time. I missed it as well because it was like an again, it was a nice little. Touch well, we, for yeah, the... we started getting a lot of copyright claims, but then, which was annoying. But also, we stopped going out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we but didn't we used, hear bands. We used to end with music all the time, local bands and stuff. Yeah, oh, a lot of Christ. the uh, it was a lot of the bands that kind of sort of played in Kingston, uh, played down the Cox. People that were friends in bands. Uh, sometimes it was just people that again were in Kingston. They sent us their music. It was like, hey, look, we got this, or just like. I mean, I remember playing Danny Fontaine's and the Horns of Fury, and yeah, they messaged us. They did indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was loved a, it. I, love it. Um, yeah, so yeah, Luke's band. Luke's like kind of a punk style, ska style band. Not the face. We're going to end with a track of his called "Not the Face" from the EP called "Not the Face." You can find it on Spotify or anywhere else. Just search "Not the Face." Not but the face. Go over that at the end. That is yeah. a good name. I we're do gonna, like. I do awesome like that as a band name. name he's a drummer not, on that, right? Yeah, he's he a drummer. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll end we'll end the episode of that track. But I think for now we should go into what we just spent a while talking about. Geese, Geese dropping. Drops. What have we heard? And more importantly, what have you heard? Geese drop power. Yeah, have a listen, have a listen. What have you heard? Bumper. Right, so you've got none. i got absolutely none. Oh, strap in, son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm strapped. First one from Fran. Awesome. Thanks, Fran. Uh, little boy in the playground. I nearly chopped half my willy off. <laughs> <laughs> what was he doing? I don't know if I can imagine a kid saying that. I bet he put it in the... Uh, do you remember the uh, Play-Doh, the shape, the Ooh. shape makers? Probably put it in that. Oh, I nearly guess. chopped half my willy off. Uh, Reese, thank you, Reese, sending this one. My godson, Reese. Nice, Reese. Roadman voice. But uh, I'm just going to read it. <laughs> 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 no, I did eat it because if I didn't, I'd get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Wise words, indeed. Words to live by. If you don't eat road, it, you'll get hungry. Road rules, mate. Road if you rules. don't eat it, you will get hungry. You will. So you can't. You can't deny that road men aren't looking out for their uh, right, for yeah. their dietary. You need to be ready. You need to be eating. Always. He's right. You'll get. Hungry. You don't want to get a stitch whilst running it's from physics, Mandel. Right? From the ops. Wise, so if wise you, get, words. you get a stitch running from ops. Your car, you're fucking in trouble. Wise words. I know. One second. I just realised I left my beer outside. Fucking hell. I know. What a joke. All right. Well, I'll just stay here. I will inform you of the rules of the road where I am. <laughs> no, rule one of Roadman is you do not talk about Roadman. Just make sure you eat. Just <laughs> that is rule one. Right. <laughs> make sure you have a hearty breakfast yes, please be for ready. your day on the road. Right, I heard these ones and this first one, mate, it took all my will not to send this to you early. Or, 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 or pull it or pull it in like the group. Yeah, yeah. I was in the garden. Because you um, know I'd remember it. It I it was um I don't know what time it was during the day, it was in the afternoon. I went in the garden to get the washing off the line. Right. And as I'm doing it, everyone's got the back doors open because it was a really sunny day. And I hear a few houses down, this woman out of nowhere scream, Is this a fucking condom wrapper? Are you fucking kidding me? A condom wrapper? Who's been here? <laughs> like, so obviously, she's like, she's like doing the washing. She mentioned she found it in the back pocket. Oh, shit. And she starts screaming at the guy. And I hear, like, No, no, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Not even and to she, their kids. Like, no, no, it, it, oh. it, was, it was a couple. Uh, I heard, mate, I heard her fucking slap him Oh, really? Hard. You heard the slap? I heard the slap. Wow. And I heard his his response, mate, his excuse, his arguing. You heard the excuse? His de- yeah, he's desperate. <laughs> he's desperately trying to justify what's happening. He very, very unconvincingly... <laughs> It's a joke. The guys, are, <laughs> oh, no. the guys are my mates are playing a joke. They put it in there, and then it went silent. 
I heard nothing else. Oh, dear. It disappeared as quickly as it came. Mm. But yeah, fuck, man. Well, I was like, oh, shit. At least he disappeared as quickly as it came. Man's busted. Into a condom. <laughs> Mm. Damn. Fucking um, A. That is sick. Uh, this one I heard on the bus. There was a mother and daughter. Sat- Whose condom is this? <laughs> there was a mother and daughter sat at the back of the bus. Quite a young daughter. I don't know, maybe 14. Yep. And the mum was basically basically trying to talk about how she wants to use the uh, track the phone to keep an eye on her. And she's like, but you turn it off sometimes. And she's like, yeah, I don't want you to know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> And like the mum, that's not even the geese shop. And the mum's like arguing that. that anyway, great. the mum at some point goes to her. You're not some. You're not some iron maiden with immortal arts. You have weak arms. You have weak arms, knee, ab, knees, and ankles. <laughs> <laughs> you're not safe out there. You're, you're not some iron. You're, you're not you're, some, you're iron, not some maiden. iron maiden with. Sorry, I read, that, I read that wrong. I read that wrong. You're not some iron maiden with martial arts. You have weak arms, knees, and ankles. You're not safe out there. <laughs> that's fucking. Great. I was like, wow, that's some scary fucking that words from mum. That is the realest shit I've ever heard a parent say to their kid. You have weak arms, you're knees, not, and ankles. You're not an iron maiden. Is fucking great. I don't know if she knows what an Iron Maiden is. I don't care. She should have just said, who are you, Joan of Arc? <laughs> right. Sam. Sam, our northern geese drop collector. Thanks, Sam. Geese drop in a half shell. Sam is saying, can't eat chocolate in Spain at the moment. It's way too hot. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like a... Breaking that's news. How they, that's how they test the weather over there. Breaking news. We now go over to the chocolate bar. As you can see, it is permanently melted. And that is the worst Spanish accent yes. I will ever do. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I like that's that's it. That's the, the weather reports in Spain is just a camera on a chocolate bar and how melty it is. It's just like, oh, it's, it's quite hot. And apparently, here. apparently this conversation led to, there's a new Charlie in the Chocolate Factory film coming out, but I haven't seen it yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It's coming out, but oh, I haven't there is, seen it. Oh, no, I was like, "Is there?" And then I was like, "Oh yeah, no." The whole like, it's the it's they they've just done the Joker, but with fucking yeah, yeah, Willy yeah, Wonka. Yeah, yeah. Isn't um, it just called Wonka as yeah, well? Yeah, we've, I wanted uh, to have the big the big like bottom to top fucking Joker. Yeah, writing. there's a bit of outrage, isn't there, that Hugh Grant's playing the Oompa Loompa? Who cares? People. Why is why is that a problem? I don't understand. <laughs> is he has he because of previous comments he's made about Oompa Loompas? Um, right. I don't know, this is confusing. Cause then, oh, other from Sam. I put, I read that as other Sam. No, other it's still Sam. the same Sam. There's one Sam. Now, uh, this one he put... She's going to buy a new mattress. Very upper class. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Very upper class buying is a new mattress. purchasing a new mattress? Just because you got like... Just because you haven't got 17 springs hitting you in the spine whilst you sleep, it just means you're upper class all of a sudden. Now, uh, Sam's for sent another one, which is actually a bit of a cheat. It's from his wife on the phone to her mum. It's allowed. Uh, did you know Jennifer Garmer grows... <laughs> did you know Je- Jennifer Garmer grows her own apron? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not sure if it means Jennifer I, Garner. I did or, or it, it says Garmer in the message. I'm not sure if that's someone else they know. But another way, it's like, Geez, did you know Jennifer Garmer grows her own apricots? Maybe it's a complete typo and he meant Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, <laughs> grows his own apricots. I bet. I guarantee you he was not growing apricots. Um, I, I didn't know. The, thing, the funny thing is, is, I didn't know that about Jennifer Garner. And I feel like not a lot if of people it, Yeah, did. but if that was her, I don't know. It could be Jennifer Garmer. Her friend, maybe they know a Jennifer Garmer. I don't know. Just give me, just give me two. Seconds. You go check, check the friends on Facebook. <laughs> Let me use Does my. Does Jennifer Garner grow her own apricots? According to people, Jennifer Garner holds up an apricot in her garden. When she's not busy growing fruit at home, the actress has been building her once upon a farm business. The company. So, so maybe yes. yes. It sounds like Jennifer Garner does grow her own apricots. But it just, did you holds, hear? holds it up in her garden. That's all it was. There was a picture of her just holding an apricot. Jennifer Garner holds apricots in her garden. Yeah. Just holds one. Well, there you go. Take a picture. That's, that's, that was literally the fucking photo. Take a picture. Greg, that was literally the photo. It, it was just her holding an apricot. Well, there we go. Good on you, Jennifer Garner. <laughs> Jennifer Gardner. This Jennifer Gardner. (laughs) 
Greg, you've took, outdone yourself. Took me a while. Greg, you on that one. Like literally, that was the picture that came <laughs> up, and it is just her holding an apricot. Maybe she's maybe she's just doing the OK sign. Just, maybe, but with an apricot. <laughs> or a fucking mutated finger. Yeah, that's a right. fucking wild to load. That is literally just, that's all she's Beautiful doing. Beautiful picture. Great shirt. Now, moving on, same from Sam, but now Tram Geese Drop here. Tramming. Tramming it so up. So Tram Geese Drop, Sam Heard. Did you see it when that, <laughs> did you see it when he sent the picture? I got through? shot at. His tram, he sent, so Sam sent us a picture of the tram he was on, and it was just a glass with a bullet hole in it, and he was just like, yep, just got shot at. Yeah, someone <laughs> shot at the tram. That's fucking mental. That is mental. Well, what happened? He's like, no, nothing. Just carried on. Drive by. Um, so yeah, he sent this one that he heard on the tram. There's too many now. Way too many for my likes. When I was younger, you could choose about five curries. Nowadays, there's all. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, there's all sorts. There's all sorts of foreign nonsense. <laughs> foreign nonsense. So yeah, no, your, your, your korma is not foreign nonsense at all. Foreign nonsense. Foreign nonsense. If I had an Indian restaurant, that is what I would call it. Oh my God, I don't don't (laughs) know if you'd get away with that. Um, Ashley sent a geese job. Thanks, Ashley. I'm not over that because he's got a valid point. Many times ago, there was just five curries. Right, yeah. Like, you know, your vindaloo, your korma, your um, your tikka masala, and then two others that I can't remember. That's like, can you name five curries? Not at all. Now I could you're Rogan Josh. You yeah, know. it sounds it sounds like a name, doesn't it? Yeah. Josh Rogan. Madras. Madras. Madras is definitely in there. Um, but no, yeah, no, the uh, the curry game has exploded. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it is fantastic. Loves loves me a bit of curry. I do love a curry. Uh, Ashley says, "No, no, no, you don't understand. She had to take pictures, and I had to go to the toilet." <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. I'm in a hungry horse pub. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. And now, I hope I do this justice reading this out. This is this is the last one. This was sent by Lee, my mate Lee. It's been a while since he sent a geese job. But as I said to you before recording, when Lee sends a geese job, you know it's a good one. It is a... Um, um, he heard this on the train. All right, here we go, I'm sure. Do you remember in English when Jack Bennett killed that seagull? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> We need to track down Jack Bennett wait, immediately. Wait. Do you remember in English when Jack Bennett killed that seagull? Sarah had a panic to him. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it's just, fuck, it's too good. Do you remember in English? I it was over. Do, no, there, there's plenty. Do you remember in English when Jack Bennett killed that seagull? Sarah had a panic attack and Matt Ross threw a glue stick. <laughs> three separate occasions or three separate events that are not connected no, in any Lee being way. the G he is full of the up with for context he threw a rock out the window and it hit a seagull right right so the seagull did not fly in to the no. room and he fought it in combat no okay do you remember in English when Jack Bennett killed that seagull Sarah had a panic attack Matt Ross threw a glue <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot happening in that English that is, class. Mate, their reunion's going to be fucking sick. There's a lot happening in that English class. That is great. Oh, my God. That is Again, awesome. I don't think those three events are connected. I feel like that's three separate things that happened in that one lesson. Yeah. I mean, I can understand. I mean, no, not a panic. Yeah, because if, if the seagull wasn't inside the classroom, there's no reason for her to have a panic attack. No. Because if he threw the stone... Out, it was mine. Oh, right. <laughs> I never came up on my phone. What? That's weird. Um, yeah, because if he threw the stone out the window and hit a seat... I mean... Uh, that's a... That, um, <laughs> <laughs> He's lost for words. I, I don't do that. believe it. Greg, if I saw a seagull and hucked a rock at it, I don't think I'd hit it. Yeah, yeah, oh no, I think he did it, but I don't know if he did it intentionally. Well, I guess he threw a rock. But that's, even if he didn't do it intentionally, that's even more yeah, impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just, he's just flung a rock and it hit a seagull. Yeah, yeah. Well played. Yeah, and he was aiming for it, I guess, Jesus. well played as well. I mean, you know, unfortunate, RIP. Yeah. Stephen Seagull. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Stephen Seagull. Stephen Seagull. Oh, I love Stephen Seagull. Might draw us being beaten up by Stephen Seagull. <laughs> pretty good another seagull based fucking on artwork on the way Steven Seagull maybe just quickly look up some recent Steven Seagull movies he hasn't made them anymore does he well he has his own company doesn't he so he kind of makes them and produces them and releases them himself that's why he still gets making films Jesus Christ um, 
He's, but he, but he's in so, no position. It's so funny when you click it. Isn't he like a like a bounty hunter he, now? His or description something? on Google: Steven Seagal, special representative for Russia slash uh, Russia US cultural links. Jesus Christ! Do you, do you? Oh no, he did come out and say like he was in support of Russia during the war. Didn't Let's he? just do a quick Steven Seagal movie title runoff. Are you ready? I'm okay. gonna go. Ready? Oh wait, wait. You tell me the movie title, and I will tell you the plot. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> Not all of them. I was, I was literally gonna run a bunch off. I admit, I'm gonna run because some of them you'll know. Ready? Okay. I'm gonna okay. run yeah. a bunch off. If any stand out, remember it and say yeah, it at the yeah, end. Yeah, ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. Under siege, above the law, hard to kill. Under siege two, out for justice, marked for death. Exit wounds, the Expendables four, on deadly ground. Fire down below, half past dead. Me and Lewis always quote half past dead. <laughs> Executive decision, the glimmer man, machete, special forces, ops, maximum conviction, out for the kill, beyond the law, into the sun, absolution, a good man driven to kill, belly of the beast, urban justice, the keeper. Pistol whipped, code of honor, kill switch, shadow man, out of rich, the foreigner. Today you die, general <laughs> commander, a dangerous man, end of a gun, <laughs> born to raise hell, contract to kill, the onion movie, force of execution, mercenary of justice, China salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Fight of Fury, the Asian connection, submerged, attack force, attraction, Black Dawn, the perfect weapon against the dark. <laughs> nice. I mean, it sounded like slam poetry in all honesty. It did a bit, didn't it? Um, Urban you know, Justice was a favourite for me. Urban Justice was up there. I uh, born Today from, you die. Born from the gun is the one that stood End up of for the me. gun. End, end of a gun. Oh, end of... I oh, there, was, might, there might have been born from a gun as well, to be fair. I, I wasn't really keeping track of them. It was, uh, if, if, if it was born from the gun, uh, it, that is just Steven Seagal. Uh, his mother was uh, uh, sexually assaulted by a gun and he was the outcome of it. Uh, and now he roams the earth trying to take out all guns is the plot that I'm going for. <laughs> I like it. So that one, I said China Salesman, mm-hmm. has two titles. It's China Salesman, and in some countries, it's Tribal Warfare. But I can, also... let, let, me, let me give you one guess as to which country it's called Tribal Warfare in, Because <laughs> I've got a feeling it's China. <laughs> it stars Steven Seagal and Mike Tyson. Fuck off, does it? Yep, 2017. 2017. I bet this is... I bet his... I feel like the uh, the whole Sharknado franchise is probably better than the whole Steven Seagal probably. movie movie company probably. franchise. Probably. I would say so. Jesus That's a fair shout. Jesus Christ. Well, I'll say it brings us to the end of the episode. I would say it brings us to the end of the episode. I am pretty drunk and high now. So <laughs> we have done a good job, everyone. Um... Uh, so yeah, we're going to finish with a song. It's been a while, man. We're going to finish with a fucking track. Yes. Uh, Luke Warren's band, Not The Face. The track. Not The Face. Not The Face. And I believe it looks like from the EP, Not The Face, they're on Spotify. They're pretty much, I imagine that anyway. Do you give it a listen because actually it's, it's, it's super enjoyable. It's a full EP. I think it's, it's five super, tracks. It's super fun fucking music. I think it's five tracks. Go fucking nuts. Go give They're it a also, uh, if you're if you're listening outside of the London area, they do uh, they are doing a bit of a sort of tour further um, into the Midlands and North, um, which is uh, going on in August as well. Ah, good things to mention. Thanks great, you, a you great a great little little tour for them, which I uh, I hope they all enjoy. Yeah. So here we go, everyone. Thanks for listening. It's been awesome as always. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. I'm going on holiday next week. It's meant to mention that I'm going on holiday in a few days, so I'll probably have lots of geese drops, ski maybe geese drops and stories to tell when I come back. It's in the UK. I'm not going to brawl. Just I don't even know where. I'm going. It's somewhere. <laughs> Six hour drive, sending home, me, Indiana, Lizzie, and the parents. So, uh, and Nando the dog. So, yeah, here we go. Fucking uh, all seen guys. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. I have been Greg, China salesman on the shop. I've been Joe. I'm not an Iron Maiden Jackson.
Rise podcast is part of Podnose, the UK's leading independent entertainment podcasting network. For episode archives of the All Seeing Guys and all of the shows on the network, visit us at www.podnose.com. You can also follow us on Twitter via at Podnose or send us an email via admin at podnose.com. Thank you.